Most gardeners groan the moment they hear the words clay soil. It's blamed for stunted roots, slow drainage, and hard pan that bakes solid under the sun. Bags of compost, gypsum, and sand get dumped in year after year, yet the soil still feels heavy and lifeless. But here's the truth. Clay itself isn't the enemy. The real problem is what's missing inside it, the microbial life that makes soil breathe, crumble, and feed plants. Clay holds the potential for some of the most fertile soil on Earth, but only when its microscopic workers are active. Once you restore that biology, even stubborn clay becomes soft, workable, and full of life. Clay soil strength becomes its weakness when microbes are gone. Clay soil particles are extremely small and tightly packed. This gives clay a powerful advantage, it holds nutrients and moisture better than any other soil type. But that same density becomes a curse when microbial activity is lost. Without active bacteria, fungi, and worms to separate and bind those particles, clay compacts into a solid block. Water can't move through, oxygen can't enter, and roots suffocate. The solution isn't to fight the clay, it's to reintroduce the organisms that keep it open and structured from within. In natural ecosystems, microbes secrete sticky substances called polysaccharides that glue clay particles into stable crumbs called aggregates. Those crumbs are what create air gaps and water pathways. When clay loses microbes, it loses that glue. No amount of compost or sand can substitute for it. So, before adding anything else, the goal must be to restore the biology that rebuilds structure from the microscopic level up. Chemical fertilizers and tilling kill the very microbes clay needs most. Most gardeners unknowingly make clay soil worse with the wrong interventions. Tilling might feel like progress. It loosens the top layer for a short time, but it slices through fungal threads and exposes microbial colonies to oxygen shock and sunlight. Those disrupted organisms don't bounce back easily, especially when followed by chemical fertilizers that deliver salts instead of carbon food sources. Each round of tilling and fertilizing strips away a layer of microbial resilience until the clay becomes sterile. What clay truly needs are stable microbial networks. Fungi that stretch between soil crumbs, bacteria that digest residues, and protozoa that recycle nutrients. Instead of turning the soil, introduce carbon-based feed materials that microbes can work on right at the surface. Covering clay with organic matter like leaf mold, composted manure, or shredded mulch provides both food and shelter. As that organic layer breaks down, microbes slowly work their way downward, opening channels and creating a new, spongy texture without a single shovel stroke. Microbes unlock clay's nutrients far better than amendments ever will. Clay is rich in minerals like potassium, calcium, and iron. The issue isn't lack, it's inaccessibility. Those nutrients are locked to clay particles, unavailable to plants until microbes intervene. Certain bacteria and fungi excrete mild acids that dissolve these bound minerals into soluble forms roots can absorb. Others form symbiotic relationships with plant roots, trading nutrients for plant sugars. When this cycle is restored, plants start feeding themselves directly from the mineral storehouse clay has always held. A practical way to jumpstart this process is through microbial inoculation using compost extracts or microbial teas. A simple method involves mixing one handful of mature compost into a 5-gallon bucket of dechlorinated water, stirring or aerating for 24 hours, then drenching the clay bed with it. This introduces billions of active microbes and wakes up dormant populations already in the soil. Repeating this weekly during the first month of soil revival can trigger visible transformation. Water starts soaking in instead of running off, and the surface begins to darken with organic life. The secret to transforming clay is feeding microbes consistently, not heavily. You know, a lot of gardeners pour in compost by the wheelbarrow, hoping for instant improvement. But, honestly, those large compost dumps can actually overwhelm clay soil, cutting off air and sealing the surface. Microbes work best with a steady supply of light, decomposable material. Just thin layers of carbon that break down gradually over time. Grass clippings, shredded leaves, straw, 
and kitchen scraps like fruit peels or coffee grounds should be spread in alternating layers, and really, you don't want them any thicker than two inches. Covering that with mulch locks and moisture, creating a self-regulating environment where microbes can thrive all year round. One of the most effective clay revival blends used by regenerative gardeners is a 3 to 1 ratio of carbon to nitrogen materials. So that could mean 3 parts dry leaves or shredded paper to 1 part fresh greens or manure. When you combine those and leave them right on the soil surface, this slow composting layer becomes a living mat where microbes can multiply freely. Unlike buried compost, it never goes anaerobic. It feeds the soil from the top down, the same way forests build their humus naturally. Moisture management really determines whether microbes live or die in clay soil. Microbes need constant moisture, but, well, clay's poor drainage can easily create a swamp. The goal is to maintain a balance, damp enough to support microbial life, but not so saturated that it drowns them out. Mulching is, again, the answer. A 2-3 to three inch mulch layer acts like insulation, reducing evaporation, and buffering the effects of heavy rain. As it decomposes, it also absorbs excess moisture during wet spells and releases it during dry ones. This steady hydration keeps microbial populations active through temperature swings and seasonal shifts. If you're starting with completely compacted clay, begin by soaking the soil lightly applying your microbial tea, then adding mulch. Over the next few weeks, just lift the mulch occasionally to monitor progress. The soil beneath should gradually soften and darken, and you'll start seeing fungal threads, those thin white strands weaving through the surface. That's a sign the microbial network is taking hold. Clay soil becomes fertile only when biology rebuilds its structure. Once microbial life returns, clay changes character completely. It shifts from heavy and sticky to loamy and pliable. Water infiltration improves, worms return, and roots begin exploring deeper layers. You don't have to dig or replace the soil. Microbes do the engineering for you, but they only stay if you continue feeding them. Never leave clay exposed or dry. Always keep an organic blanket over it, whether through living cover crops, mulch, or decomposing residue. For gardeners working on raised beds or large plots, maintaining microbial strength can be as simple as adding one gallon of diluted microbial tea every two weeks and refreshing mulch monthly. Over time, this transforms clay from a suffocating mass into a self-sustaining, nutrient-rich ecosystem. Clay soil isn't bad soil, it's just misunderstood. The difference between a hard pan and a fertile bed isn't in texture but in life. Once microbes return, clay becomes your greatest ally, holding nutrients and moisture better than any imported mix ever could. So stop fighting your soil with endless digging and additives. Feed the biology not the structure, and let nature handle the rebuilding. If this guide helped you see clay in a new light, subscribe and share it with other gardeners who are ready to turn their problem soil into their biggest asset.